Welcome back to 3 News at 4. It is 441 right now, and we're glad to have you with us. Yeah, and early this morning, as you've probably heard, President Trump secured enough electoral college votes to secure the presidency. Trump won in several key battleground states overnight. He also won right here in Ohio, and he's taking an Ohioan to the White House, of course, as well. Signal Cleveland's Mark Namick joins us now to talk about what's next. Before we do that, your reaction to what we just heard from Vice President Harris. Uh, it is the right tone, right out of the gate, to acknowledge that the president won. And there is a subtlety to that, right, because we had a president, Trump, previous, who didn't accept that. And I think that was a little subtlety to say, look, I'm moving forward. I accept this. Um, everything else in there was, you know, spot on for the way you give a concession speech. You acknowledge uh, the defeat. Then you talk about what fueled it. You want to keep those supporters in a, in a way that ties into what we'll be talking a little bit about here with, o with Ohio Democrats, right? You, you lose, but it is in that defeat that you're supposed to find strength and, and fight back and, and rebuild. And she was trying to say, too, to that group, now's the time to organize for the next one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she said it's not time to throw up our hands, it's time to roll up our roll sleeves. Up our sleeves and, yeah. and the question is, J.D. Vance's Senate seat. Well, that's the hot topic in Ohio for sure. And I know, uh, Matt, I think you've been looking into that around uh, Ohio today. A lot of names out there, but it's Governor DeWine's call. And he has the ability to pick someone and he likes to shape a legacy. So you could see him consider Jane Timken, a former Ohio Republican Party chairwoman who's been active and ran for that Senate seat and, and lost earlier in the primaries. Uh, Vivek Ramaswamy, uh, who is an Ohioan, has ties to J.D. Vance. He's floated a lot. He was at the Republican National Convention earlier this year, openly campaigning for that seat <laughs> uh, if it came to this. Uh, and you'll see uh, there's a host of other uh, names out there, but DeWine will have to consider two things, what matters to his own legacy, but also who can withstand his own party's primary process. Because we saw this last week with Tucker Carlson, who made disparaging remarks about the governor, putting him over there as, as not part of the, the, the Trump party. So there's a lot in play there. Right, yeah. Can you talk about what happens to the Ohio Democratic Party? Because a lot of people see this as a big failure yesterday about what, what happened there, uh, you know, apart from a couple of seats. Yeah, no, since 2024, they seem to be finding new bottoms. <laughs> uh, they hit the bottom. They lost uh, their three major statewide candidates, two Supreme Court uh, justices, and of course, uh, U.S. Senator Sherrod Brown. And issue one, which was, again, uh, backed largely along party lines, went down pretty strongly. Both parties, I will say, you know, communicated to a lot of reporters that they thought it was going to pass. In fact, there was even rumblings of how the Republican Party might look to undo it if it passed. So hmm. that is that tears it all down, gives them a chance to rebuild. We've seen it, though, and heard it before, and it's, it's not done well. It will be hard to raise money uh, for statewide campaigns when you are in this situation where you've got such a red state. But 2026 has an open seat for governor, so that does take away at least the incumbent advantage there. All right, real quickly, uh, what about ballot issues? Yeah, I think you will see uh, things calm down. Uh, the, a lot of, though, the liberal-leaning groups that, that fund the, this, this issue one and others around the state will not give up on, on that. You've seen it with other issues, whether it's been legalization of marijuana, uh, wage issues around the country. They've been defeated, and they, they come back because that is a, a policy that people are willing to put money behind. Um, and I think you'll see that coming, maybe not this next cycle. But everything springs back. You expect uh, when parties are in power, there was always a, a you know, a, a pushback in that next two-year cycle. That is always an advantage then to the party that just lost. Hmm. Okay. Mark Nemec with uh, Signal Cleveland. We appreciate it. We know you've been at it for a while. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Thank you Absolutely. so much.